Hi, Trevor here, reflecting on live tree music. Thank you for stopping by. Well, come in again, you're very, very welcome. I trust you enjoyed my last video on 2017 movie, The Greatest Showman, the one that starred Hugh Jackman and looked at the life of P.T. Barnum. And through a few of the songs from that movie, we looked at the, the tenacity of human spirit. So I trust you found that one encouraging. We're well, going back to Australia, 1992, Melbourne, Craig's Harnath on bass, Brez Pawsey on drums, Zoran Rimmick on guitar and Adam Thompson on lead vocals. Craig will be replaced by John Nixon and uh, Bruce Darren Danielson on drums. These guys very much rock pop, um, but you know what makes Chocolate and Starfish so good is, is Adam Thompson. He is the absolutely amazingly compelling front man. Uh, and, but, you know, when you put the Chocolate Starfish behind, band behind that, this is an absolutely compelling act, this one. And one that's taken Australian by storm ever since 1992. Um, in fact, these guys have actually gone on to cover some of the greatest albums of all time, including Bad Out of Hell, which is, of course, a meatloaf classic. Um, because, you know, Adam's got such a voice, he can actually get away with it and actually deliver it really, really well, as well as, how, or as, well as having the attitude to go along with it. So Chocolate Starfish um, burst onto the scene in 1994 with a self-titled album. It was a very, very successful album as indeed. In fact, it got to number two on the ARIA charts. And they thought, well, as an initial hit, let's do You're So Vain, which is a cover of a Carly's of the Carly Sinon classic. And I have covered Carly in a previous video looking at this song. And 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 but they didn't change it too much. But they changed it just enough to put the chocolate starfish stamp on it. And that's actually what you want to do when you cover a song. You want to put your own spin on it. And whereas in the past we had a girl singing this song, Carly sang this song so well, Adam came along and put his own spin on it and he just created such an ooze of the class with this song. And so, again, the videos are below as we go. We've got a live version of Your So Vain. Then, and also of that 1994 self-titled album, we've got Mountain. Um, and one of the lines in this um, chorus is, you wanted to me to be a mountain, but I want to be a river. Um, the story goes that um, his girlfriend at the time wanted him to settle down and to have a normal life, but Adam was so into getting um, getting into chocolate stuff, he said he just didn't want to do that. So he likened this, he said, I suppose, the still life to a mountain but if you are a river you don't want to be a mountain you want to be a river and you want to see where life can go and, and the lives you can touch and so a quite a beautiful take on life and that is that we've only got one life to live so we've got to make the most of it while we can and so Adam Thompson really truly wanted to do that with mountain. I probably first heard of Chocolate Starfish through the song Accidentally Cool this came off the box album from 1995 and below we've got a live version and the official clip on that one. I suppose this is the song I really wanted to focus through. Through a particular event that happened at the Winter Olympics in 2002. Um, accidentally cool. It's, you know, what do you think about when you think about those lines? Well, I wasn't really intending to be cool, but it seems to be that I have actually have become cool. I'm accidentally cool, in fact, and I'm just trying to work out how, what this all means. So let's go forward, let's go back to 2002 and we'd, we've got a really, really fast ice skating um, sprint race going on here. There are five, five guys in, the, um, in this particular race, including Steve Bradbury. So, and, and so when it went through all the laps, they were getting there and I've got a clip to this particular race below and you, you've got to believe it to see what happened here. This race is actually quite famous because what happened. So they get to the last lap, in fact it's the very, very last bend. You know, we're talking a very, very tight circuit here and we're talking about really having to get low to get around the bends and be able to keep the pace up and all the rest of it. And you'll see in this whole clip, the guy in green, Steve Bradbury, is very and truly behind. In fact, as um, as the race goes further and further on, he gets just that little bit more behind than he was. But let's not discount the effort it takes to get to the Olympic Games and to perform at this level and at this speed. This is pretty hair-raising what's going on here. Well, 
at that very last bend, the, the lead guy falls over, knocking all those other three behind him with him. And then Steve Bradbury just coasts through and wins the gold medal. This is one of those moments in time when, you know, you can't believe what's actually happened here. And you can't believe that you actually won the gold medal, which is such an iconic event as this one. And so, you know, there's been many comments going around ever since, like, oh, we did a Steve, Steve Bradbury here. We just got we just got away with it. Or, you know, oh, and, but I'm sure Steve, when he got that gold medal, hung around his neck and thinking, what on earth has just happened here? But, of course, there was no shortage of, of interviews and all the rest of it when he got back to Australia about, now, how did it feel to be a gold medalist? But deep down, down he's thinking, well, it's kind of all right, I suppose. <laughs> Because I didn't get it on my own merit, or did I? You know, the fact that I, you know, saw all this rough and tumble happening up ahead of me, if I just hang back for a while, perhaps I'll get a bit of a way forward. But because he was wise in the, in the way his race was, and because he saw how ferocious the other four were going for it, he kind of, I think, sensed that something was going to happen, and he just crushed it at the end. Um, this goes something. This goes into a little bit about sometimes long-term strategies is a good thing because it enables you to think about the bigger picture while trying to win at the same time. And um, I just wonder what it's like, you know, when we might have this bit of a feeling where something quite remarkable happens and we think we weren't expecting it to happen, and we think, "Wow, how did that even happen? How did that even? How did that even come to pass? Why is it that I was a guy who this happened to?" And we celebrate the fact that we've actually had the same thing happen, but we're also a little bit, I suppose, sheepish about the fact that it did. I think we've, I mean, we've got to give poor Steve Bradbury a bit of a go here, and that is that, no, celebrate the fact that he did actually win the gold medal. He did actually, he was the last man standing and enabled him to actually win the gold medal. And I think there's something cool to say that he became accidentally cool because he was a gold medalist. Australia doesn't get very many gold medals in the Winter Olympics because, let's face it, there's not much in the way of snow here. Um, but to actually get a gold medal for Australia is pretty, pretty cool. So we need to celebrate with Steve what actually happened, what was a significant event in 2002. And I think if we do actually find someone's getting success, the first thing we want to do is kind of knock them down and say, hey, you don't deserve that success, or hey, you were just in the right place at the right time. Well, yes, they were. And I can say that Steve was in the right place at the right time, absolutely, and he capitalised on this opportunity and won. Um, we've got to be very, very careful to knock people down when they get a win, and we tend to do that, don't we? We tend to think, oh, we're, just, you know, we're jealous a little bit ourselves. And we don't want to um, acknowledge the win that there is. And so we just kind of just rubbish people. We want to celebrate wins no matter how corny they might be. Because uh, Steve would have been feeling a bit, a little bit embarrassed. But, you know, let's, Steve, you've got nothing to be about, embarrassed about, mate, here. You actually won a gold medal legitimately and properly and safely and all the other things there is. And it, likewise, it goes in your, your own life. We know life is for living, and if we get any, anything good that happens at all, let's celebrate it. Let's ignore the scoffers who might be saying other things, just, hey, I'm going to celebrate this thing anyway, because you know what? I got to the Winter Olympics, and I actually won this thing. So let's always celebrate our achievements. I think this is the takeaway from this video today. Ignore what people say and actually just um, celebrate the wins that we have. So we've got the video, one take on the many videos on YouTube of this particular race. Um, just stay with it to the end because it's in that very last few seconds, it all happens. So chocolate starfish, um, elements of pop, um, but also hard rock as we see with um, Accidentally Called. Very, very catchy song this one. Great guitar work going on and some pretty amazing vocals and vocal harmony happening as well. And uh, the live version, which is from Hey Hey, it's Saturday, I do remember watching this when it first came out and thinking, wow, I love this song. Having, having no idea who Chocolate Starfish was, but really, really enjoying this song and trying to work out who sang that song again. It's great to be able to look at these guys today. Now, if you want to know what Chocolate Starfish means, uh, may I suggest you do a bit of a YouTube search on it and just be prepared because it's a bit out there. <laughs> okay, just leave it at that. But as far as these guys are concerned, 
the better be reverence these guys have got to the world as well. It's a perfect name and what a great name for a band, Chocolate Starfish. So the links to those one, two, three, four, five clips are in the description below. And I've also included my last video on From the Greatest Showman. So if you want to recap on that one, feel free. Well, it's great to see you all back. If this is the first time to Life Reflections or you've come back for another one, I trust you've all been encouraged today as you look at your own wins in your life. Well, that's it today. Next time we're going to go on to piano legend Fats Domino. So until then, I'll catch you around. Bye for now.